not doing that. I ain't standing there. So I lost a bet with Brandon Herrera and Brandon Herrera got to pick what gun I got to review. Unfortunately, Brandon Herrera is friends with my camera guy. <laughs> Unfortunately, my camera guy likes to have vibes. So of course they picked this Giga Chad Mosin Nagan. So today on Grantham, we're going to be talking about how to make a good gun <laughs> gun bad and we'll be going over and we'll talk about how it actually performs compared to a regular Mosin Degon. So stay tuned as we get into it. But before we do, we have to thank our sponsors. We have to give a big thank you to Brownells. Thank you, Brownells. You guys are base AF. Um, we, of course, have to also thank USCCA. Go check them out. They are good people. And of course, our favorite Zydax with their awesome gaming computers. Go check them out. Gaming channel starting up. And before we go, we have to mention, but Micah, we have a our Patreon is going, dude. Oh, it's popping off. It's popping. Good content on there right now. If you're missing out, you're missing out. <laughs> you're missing out. It's uh, exclusive content being run by the camera guy, so he's just posting uh, everything that I don't want you to see, pretty much, literally. Now, of course, any questions are answered by myself, but go check it out. So screw you, Brandon Herrera, ladies, gentlemen, but my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. Brandon Herrera's stolen motorcycle. How about that? So <laughs> today we're gonna to be talking about this Mosin. So the thing about the Mosin, it is it is legitimately a, a good rifle. It is well designed. It obviously has fought in multiple wars up until now, literally still shooting now. And people have been shooting these for a long time. And with the correct ammunition, they are fairly accurate weapons. You know, we of course have this bastard right here, but we also have a unmolested. Mosin carbine right here, which is just in beautiful condition, all matching. So we will be directly comparing the Giga Chad Mosin versus the unmolested, what do we say? Not Giga Chad, but Virgin Mosin. Nice guy Mosin. Nice guy Mosin. We'll say the nice guy Mosin. So we have these two, we'll directly compare these. Now to start off with, if you're not familiar, the Mosin Nagant is a bolt action rifle and it is fed from originally a five round internal magazine fed from stripper clips typically, if nothing's wrong with it. So originally the Mosin has a five round internal magazine. Now it is chambered in 7.62 by 5.4 rimmed. And uh, it is a very old cartridge, not the best cartridge, but you know it because Russia made so much of it and every you know, uh, Soviet bloc country made so much of it. It is still around that is used to this day in many, many rifles, including the SVD and many, many others. So. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna go ahead and start right at the end and, and directly compare these two rifles and see how they do. <laughs> okay, this muzzle brake is the most aggressive muzzle brake that you could possibly have. And I mean, it, it works not in a good way because it is just so aggressive that it, depending on the ammunition type, it'll actually pull the rifle away from your shoulder because it's it the ports are facing back like do you see that Micah do you see how they're like facing back it's you, pretty rough man you and did this I I know and, and there's the crazy part is how it secures too I don't want to know please don't tell me <laughs> please don't tell. how does it secure Micah it, so it just long story short the Mosin doesn't have threads so it just twists around that front sight and then locks into place with those golden screws that's so awful okay so to show you how effective this muzzle brake is compared to a typical Mosin Nagant. We will go ahead and shoot this guy right here. All right. It's actually very pleasant. Actually for a Mosin, very light recoil. Not that the Mosin is a hard recoiling gun, but you can see in comparison, this Mosin carbine, which of course being a carbine, it's gonna recoil a little bit harder.
Yeah, I mean, if you pay attention to those muzzles, that one just jets down. It definitely does. And I wasn't holding either of these too tight. Um, gotta let the recoil just ride through. So we can see if I really try, I can control that Mosin recoil. But again, this is something where if I don't have to try as hard, that's better, right? Okay, so I have this. So if I control it, I can definitely control it, but it's certainly more easier, there goes my English right there, to shoot with the Mosin with the brake. Should we start keeping score? I think that's no, one. No, no, I don't. <laughs> nice, <laughs> next topic. Giga Chad Mosin one. So when it comes to the barrel, obviously, there's no change here. The Giga Chad Mosin has the same barrel as any typical Mosin, so you're not gonna see any change there. It is an accurate weapon, as long as you have good loaded ammunition, and that's gonna be the big problem, is finding good 7.62 by 5.4R that is loaded well enough to keep those groups tight. Now, so we're gonna put that one as a wash. No points for anybody. One point for each. One point for each. One point for the Giga Chad, one point for the nice. regular uh, rifle of the people. The next part of this rifle makes me so, so angry. So this key mod rail, first off, is not even, it's not even made for a Mosin. It's called the Russian VS-24. It's not even made for a Mosin, Micah. It's made for an AK and it is on backwards or, up, or upside down. In any case, if you look at the, at the attachment points, it is literally screwed into the wood, literally screwed into the wood. Now we do have an Atlas bipod on there, which is a, which is probably worth more than the Mosin itself. Oh, definitely. The, the bipod with the light alone. Gosh, this makes me angry. And going up to the light, we of course have a Surefire Scout light, um, which is about the price of the rifle as well. Uh, why do we have a light? Well, you need the capability to fight at night, clearly. Is that, uh, is that one point? There's no mounting That's one platform. point. Yeah, there's no mounting platform in the typical Mosin. Now, if we run from that light, we do have a pressure pad going back and duct taped to the back right there. That way we can activate the uh, weapon light uh, when we're holding the Mosin in the typical fashion. And moving up from there, we have a B.E. Myers Mall, partially blocked by the light because that makes sense because the mall is too powerful. That is actually a mall DA that is worth like 10 Mosins right there and I don't want to talk about it. But we have a mall right there because we have to be able to own the night. So does the typical people's rifle has, have the capability to fight at night and own the night? No, that's one point. That's two points. It's one for the light and one for IR tech. I can't, I wasn't gonna do it, but the cleaning rod should be mentioned. It's inaccessible on the Giga Chad Mosin. There you go, that's negative one point, so we're gonna cancel out the light because this one can be had. Now, going back from there, the, the scope mount. So the, the scope, the, the mount itself is actually drilled and tapped into the receiver. So it, it is actually a very sturdy platform. But the problem, there's many problems with doing this. So the number one problem is that we of course can no longer use a stripper clip on the Mosin. So with the top open channel, channel, we can easily put a surfer clip in there, feed it in there, we'll show a video of that right there. However, due to the way that our optic is right there, that is a problem. This of course has presented a problem to Russians and the Finnish alike for a long time, as well as getting up to a height where you can clear it, especially for the bolt, because obviously on a typical Mosin boat, bolt, it throws up at 90 degrees. So the solution, in the Giga Chad Mosin's case is to turn the bolt down. Now, however, due to the way the optic sits, it goes, it barely, barely clears that optic. Like it is just barely there. In fact, it can present some problems for extraction. Um, we've had a couple issues with it due to that, but it, it does clear the optic. I'll give it to that. Now, optic is another point then, correct? No, we're getting there. Okay. Simo Haya, the white death himself, the best sniper in all of history actually didn't use an optic on his Mosin. In fact, he used iron sights because he didn't want to have to get his head up high enough to see through the optic because he would get his head so much higher over the barrel, there's a greater chance of getting shot through his head. Therefore, I'm actually going to subtract 
two points Dang. from the Mosin, from the GigaChad Mosin, for having that optic both blocking the bolt and making it more difficult to load stripper clips, as well as getting your head too high off the Mosin. It's fair. White Death has proven that you just sit lower. So to prove the point, right? So we have my head where my cheek position sits on this stock right here, versus if I need to get on this optic, I have to be looking through right here. So I'm much higher, which could lead to death. And that's not what you want. And I'm also gonna subtract a point on that bolt. That is horrible. Like, we could we could have put an EOTech on there, I suppose. That would have made it a little bit easier for CQB shooting and the, <laughs> and the like. But it is what it is. Now, from there, moving down to the magazine, um, typically five rounds are held. Now, this should hold 10. Found it to be a little bit finicky, like most aftermarket Mosin parts. <sighs> this thing is barely working. Would you agree? It holds 10. That's an additional point. We don't need to. Tell. Okay, hold on. It holds 10. <laughs> Additional point, however, subtracted a point for liability issues. It doesn't with, work well. It doesn't work well at all. This this um, whole just rifle is a piece of shit. But it is GigaJad status, straight up. That makes me sad. I know, I know. Don't feel too bad. Now, coming to the trigger, we'll go ahead and we'll compare the GigaJad's trigger versus the typical Mosin trigger. So we have stiff trigger right there. A little bit of play, about a millimeter, two, three, and a pretty clean let off right there. Let's try that one more time. That's not too bad. Now, reset's not really going to be a thing, but if we want to take the weapon down, it's very simple in the Mosin Nagant, which if you didn't know, is a very simple process. Simply hold the trigger down, retract the bolt, and it's very, very simple to do. Get that back in there. So. Going over to our M38. Go ahead and try that trigger right there. Okay, feeling into it. About one, two, three, four, five. Much heavier trigger, actually. What did you do to that trigger? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> okay. I, I want to say stock. I bought it with some stuff. It's probably just worn. So. <laughs> so this trigger right here is, um, this is a much nicer example of a Mosin. And this one has about a about seven-ish pound trigger, but it doesn't feel bad. It feels pretty good, actually. Yeah, not bad at all. This one, much lighter, likely due to the fact that it is worn. I did have a question. Yeah. Uh, if you push my trigger forward, it has a ton of play. Does that one, too? So rack the trigger. Push the trigger forward. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's Mosin, man. Okay, moving back from there. <laughs> actually, we have a couple good things here. So we'll, we'll point out what's good right back here on the stock. So, of course, we have the opportunity to have more ammunition on the Mosin. That's plus two for two additional stripper clips that can't be used. Though that's minus one. So that doesn't really work very well, but it's a, it's a good effort. And then we do have a enormous recoil pad. I will say the recoil pad is actually nice. With the muzzle brake, um, it is a very um, soft shooting weapon. And people will argue about recoil pads, like, do you really need it? Well, sure, no, but, I mean, when you're shooting all day, it certainly helps, so why not? Of course, it breaks the aesthetic of the rifle. Now, on the Mosin, of course, we have none of that stuff because Russian Army strong. Gosh, this was painful to do. That brings us to the end of the GigaJad Mosin. Uh, what do I think of it? I think it's a huge piece of shit, and it took a rifle that was perfectly usable, and it made something that was barely usable, but could be used at night, potentially, and could potentially hit harder, longer range targets because of the optic, potentially. So a lot of potential there. You want to show them the head position in order to actually acquire the scope though? Yeah, it's not good to be clear. So if I'm looking through, through it, I'm only seeing a shadow of the entire, of the reticle. So technically it'd have to be about right here to get good eye relief, you but that's not, straight it's straight not control. possible. So I'm just right here. It's Really a not, good, not a good setup at all. But god damn, is it a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dick and Chad Mosin wins? Yeah, so, uh, you know, to put it, to kind of, you know, tally up all the points, Dick and Chad Mosin wins, we'll see the tally marks right here, but, I mean, you can fight at night with this bitch, so that's all that matters. And uh, the thing that really matters is if you aren't training with these guys, it's not going to matter. So make sure that you get training 
tons of great places to get training from. Please don't take any of these rifles out for like a legitimate training course unless it's legitimately all that you're using. In any case, the point being is that you are the weapon. Make sure that you train yourself up. And legitimately, I don't want to say anything more about this rifle right here. We're done. Final thing for you guys. A lot of people in the firearm industry believe that it's not okay to have fun or that everything needs to be taken super seriously. Um, it's, not, it's not good for your heart health. It's okay to laugh and to have fun or to do something that's just stupid and fun. Uh, this was a very stupid project that was built by my camera guy, Brenton Herrera. And uh, we had a good time doing it. We had a lot of laughs as they were putting all these pieces together. And it was just fun, guys. And that is okay. It is okay to have fun and to have a good time with firearms. Because, because as serious as it is, and obviously we know that gun rights and training are serious issues, it's also okay to have fun with your hobby. So please have fun. Please have fun. It's going to be good for you in the long run, I promise. Take care.